Hello everyone, today is September the 2nd. I'm Dr. Adam London, Director of the Kent County Health Department, here for this week's update. Here in Kent County, as of today, we've seen 7,794 diagnosed positive cases of COVID-19. We've seen about 40 to 45 as an average over the past seven days. We saw 43 new cases yesterday. Our positivity rate has gone up a little bit over the past week from the previous several weeks. We're seeing 2.4% of our tests come back positive over this past week. Uh, the last few weeks have been just under 2%. So that's a little concerning for us. We're not exactly sure what that means, if it uh, is just a kind of natural variation or if it's something that uh, is the early part of a, of a new trend, but it's something we're watching very carefully. And right now we've had 6,483 recoveries. And these are people who have survived COVID for a full 30 days. And we're at 160 deaths here in Kent County in total. Uh, we have seen our, our rate of death gone down during the month of August. That was fantastic. Right now we're seeing about one death every three to four days. Uh, to give you some perspective, a couple of months ago at the peak of our deaths, we were seeing three to four deaths every day. And now we're seeing one death every three to four days. Uh, so that's a positive development. Uh, however, of course, uh, our hearts and our, our prayers, our thoughts go out to those 160 families here in Kent County who have lost a loved one. There was a story out earlier this week from the CDC saying that 94% of all COVID-19 deaths had other pre-existing conditions listed on their death certificate. And we're getting lots of questions about that. And what does it mean? And does it mean that COVID-19 actually wasn't the cause of death and that the death was caused by something else. And, uh, and so I just want to talk for a moment about that uh, and the reality that 45% uh, that of all Americans do have pre-existing conditions. And we've known from the beginning that people with pre-existing conditions are most vulnerable to the most severe effects of COVID-19. And so it's not surprising to us uh, and it's not unique to COVID-19 that when someone dies of this, that other things are listed as comorbidities, things like hypertension, obesity, diabetes, asthma, cancer, heart disease, are all listed as comorbidities. And so when someone dies, whether it's of COVID-19 or a heart attack or, or anything else, those things which were also affecting that person, those things which may have contributed to that person's death, are listed uh, as other factors. And so uh, if someone dies of a heart attack, uh, a heart disease or heart attack will be listed as the cause of death, but things like hypertension or obesity that may have contributed to that death are also listed. So while there are other contributing factors, it doesn't mean that COVID-19 wasn't the cause. It just means that the death is more complicated than one single uh, illness or, or injury. Uh, and so please don't interpret that to mean that, uh, that these deaths were caused by something else because that's not the case. Uh, something else that happened over the past week that I want to talk about uh, that was tragic and heartbreaking uh, was the sudden unexpected death of Chadwick Boseman. And I think we all uh, respected his work and respected uh, his, uh, his humanitarian work as well. And it was really shocking to many people that, that he died of colon cancer. And so I think this is a good opportunity to remind everyone that colorectal cancer is actually the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States. Each year, approximately 53,000 Americans die of a colorectal cancer. And I think this is a particular type of cancer that's very concerning. It's also not talked about nearly enough. And so I hope that part of his legacy uh, will be that we started talking about colorectal cancer because of his tragic passing. And so I want to remind you uh, and your loved ones that if you're seeing signs that are consistent with a colorectal cancer, things like bloody stool or persistent abdominal pain or swelling, persistent diarrhea or constipation, or unexplained weight loss, that you should talk to your physician about those things. Uh, it may be related to a, a colorectal uh, problem that could be easily identified early on and a, and a more severe problem can be prevented. And it may be something else that can be treated as well. But early 
identification uh, and early prevention is so important uh, in order to stop these things from becoming uh, so much worse and becoming one of those 53,000. I'd love it if we can see that number get smaller every year, in part because of the lessons we've learned from, from him. Also remind you to make sure you're talking to your physician and make sure you're getting a, a regularly scheduled physical and talking to your doctor about can, risk, can, risk factors for cancer. Whether it's colorectal cancer or any other type of cancer, so many of these deaths can be prevented if they're identified early on and they're treated before they become very serious. So uh, again, our, our thoughts go out to, to his family as well uh, and to everyone who is struggling with cancer. Uh, it is a, an awful disease and one that we can make a difference in if we look for those signs early on. That's all for this week. I want to encourage you to stay positive, stay heroic, and stay healthy. And I'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you.